This place is steeped in history, where the English King Edward I visited and stayed. He was also known as Longshanks, the Hammer of the Scots. It's a location where Sir William Wallace attacked the English garrison and would put them all to the sword. This place is rich with history and its name is Conclaven Castle. I have just parked up next to the McClure Beach Hedges, just outside of Blair Gowrie in Perthshire, Scotland. Now I did a short video on the men who planted the hedge here and then went off to fight for Bonnie Prince Charlie in 1746 and died at the Battle of Culloden. You can find that video in my video section. Now the main road here takes you towards Schoon Palace which is where the Kings of Scotland were crowned back in antiquity. I'll be doing a video on Schoon Palace some point later this year. And a little further on yet, you will find the city of Perth. But we're not here for that today. We're here to visit the ruins of a castle that was sacked by Sir William Wallace in 1297, and where he would put the English garrison and its constable to the sword. Now, the name of this castle is named Kinclaven Castle. This is the Kinclaven Bridge, which was built in 1905. Now to cross this river before that date, you'd have needed to take a ferry, which of course is no longer in use. Now I've crossed this road hundreds of times in my car on my way to Perth and beyond. It offers beautiful views of the river, which you can see in the landscape before it. Just look at those views, absolutely stunning. It's just a wee taste of what Scotland has to offer. That building you can see there is called the Old Ferryman's Cottage. And as I mentioned earlier, if you wanted to cross a river at this point before 1905, you would have used the ferry. Well, that was where the ferryman lived himself. Now, don't be tempted to park your car in that rather large car park, because it's private. Your best bet is to park at the beach hedges where we started this journey. We are now walking through the woods, which will take us towards the ruins of Kinclaven Castle. A beautiful wee woodland area, this. Peaceful and full of wildlife. It's a lovely winter's day. <sighs> How peaceful. Apart from the tractors I can hear off in the distance. <sighs> Food for the soul. Clavin Castle was commissioned and to be built for a Scottish king named Malcolm Canmore. He reigned from 1057 until 1093. But during the first wars of independence which started in 1296 and ended in 1328, it fell into English hands. King Edward I stayed here for a short time in June 1296. He was marching north where he captured Kincraven Castle from the Scottish garrison that was based here. He apparently only stayed the one night and then continued moving north with his army. Now, you'll likely be familiar with King Edward I from the movie Braveheart, perhaps better known to you as Longshanks. The trouble with Scotland 
is that it's full of Scots. <laughs> In 1297, Sir William Wallace, with a detachment of men, recaptured the castle. He was in the hot pursuit of English knights on horseback from Perth, a near 15 mile chase, and followed them here to the castle. Wallace then attacked the castle and the English garrison surrendered. They might have expected mercy for this act, but none was forthcoming. Their fate was immediate. Wallace had the soldiers, including the castle's governor, Sir James Butler, put to the sword. Apparently William Wallace and his men stayed at Conclaven for seven days before putting the castle to the torch and burning it to the ground. The idea was to put the castle out of the reach of the English, who would likely retake the castle and once again make use of its defensive location in the Scottish countryside. In 1335, the English once again under the command of King Edward III came to Kinclaven and made repairs to the castle. Now this was done to garrison the castle against the Scots but when King David II returns from France, he gains the backing of the Scottish nobles and Kinclaven is once again taken from the English forces. Once again, it would be destroyed for strategic reasons and left as a ruin so that the English could not use it. The castle has been repaired and reused several times, but around 1455, the castle fell into ruin once again and it was allowed to decay. And this is how it remains to this day. The walls of the castle are around 7 feet 6 inches thick. There would have been a drawbridge here, which would have been the main entrance into the castle. There would also have been a staircase here that would have led to a walkway, which would have went all around the four sides of the castle. The castle itself is very much a square shape that measures around 130 feet in length and 30 feet in height. This castle was never built to be as grand or long-standing as say Edinburgh Castle or Stirling Castle. It seems it was only ever used as a garrison at certain periods of time in the past, when England and Scotland were constantly at one another's necks and a stopping point for armies either going north or south of this location. If you look here, there would have been three windows in this location. This would have been part of the Great Hall where people from history, such as Longshanks and William Wallace, would have dined whilst they stayed here. Quite an incredible thought that these famous men, both from Scottish and English history, indeed British history, were walking around this castle and that I am likely standing where they did all those years ago. As is nearly always the case with the castles or the ruins of castles, they were generally built on the foundations of a fort or castle that was already in that location and was simply built upon or completely rebuilt in antiquity. This castle has been visited and revisited by royalty and important historical figures from history. King Alexander II stayed here on at least two occasions around 1248. This is known because of written records indicating that he ordered a large amount of alcohol to be delivered to Conclaven ahead of his arrival. And no doubt a good time was had by all. This doorway here is known as a sally port and it's of original design from the period. This was used as a secret entrance in and out of the castle. It would also have been used by people fleeing the castle during an attack. I imagine you would have to hope that any besieging soldiers would not simply surround the castle and make good your escape. A scary thought if you are running blind out here and in fear of your life. There would have been several doorways here and a window where you could look out to see whether the coast was clear or not. I imagine the outer door would have been camouflaged in some way, 
likely with ivy and shrubbery disguised in the entrance here. You could also imagine that if the front door of the castle was being attacked by enemy soldiers, you could send men from the castle out this door and they could sneak around the walls of the castle and surprise attack the invaders, who would have been completely unaware until the last moment of the soldiers' presence. It's quite a thought really, isn't it, that I am standing where William Wallace, <laughs> this man from Scottish history that we know so much about, was here in this castle. And that I might very well be standing where he did all those years ago. This man who took on the English and eventually would be hung, drawn and quartered by Longshanks in England. It's quite a thought. He wandered these walls, killed the English that were inside here, and stayed for seven days, ate food, I'm sure there was alcohol involved, and then at the end of the seven days he burned it down and moved on to his next location. It's quite, quite an amazing thought that he was here. It's a strange feeling that. I don't know about you, but I often think, you know, when you hear about historical figures, you don't imagine that you'll stand in a place where they were. It's a bit like that with Robert the Bruce for me. When I visited um, Dunfermline Abbey it was, and I was told as, as I was going in that Robert the Bruce was buried there. And I couldn't, I couldn't quite believe it. Now, of course, he was buried somewhere. And he was a real person. And so when I went into Dunfermline Abbey, I saw his grave. And I was blown away by it. Do you know that part, do you know that bit in the movie um, Da Vinci Code at the very end? And Tom Hanks is standing over the... Well, basically he's standing on top of the pyramid and he's looking down and he realises that uh, Mary Magdalene is buried beneath the pyramid. A complete realisation that she's there. That's what it was like for me when I visited Robert the Bruce's grave. It blew me away. And like I say, he had to be buried somewhere. And these people were real. But it's funny, I've got this thing in my head that you, you read about them and you see them in films and they don't seem real until you visit a place like Kinclavin Castle and you know William Wallace was here. I can't be the only one who feels like this about places like this. <laughs> it's quite an amazing thought. As I've said many times in the past in my videos, I love to imagine the people who would have visited these historic locations and if I could be like a fly in the wall to not only witness the events that took place here, but be able to observe these historical figures such as Sir William Wallace and King Edward I in the flesh walking within these walls. What an amazing adventure that would be. As it is, the way my imagination works, it allows me to picture these people from history wandering around the grounds and within the castle. To imagine the soldiers eating their food and sharpening their swords, preparing once again to move on to their next location. William Wallace having been here is the crowning jewel of my visit. This figure from Scottish history besieged the castle and took it back from the English garrison. Now William Wallace had no love for the English and showed no mercy upon his enemies. These were hard times and it made for hard men. Men like Wallace and Longshanks were the products of their time. Ruthless and patriotic. 
Their histories are intertwined after all. It was Longshanks who had Wallace hung, drawn and quartered of August 1305. His head was dipped in tar and stuck on a pike on London Bridge as a warning to others. These were hard men and they came from hard times. If you get the chance, come and visit the castle and wander around its walls and know that William Wallace was once here and that if you use your imagination, perhaps even close your eyes, you might sense his presence here at Conclaven Castle. If you've enjoyed my video, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel or follow my channel on TikTok, which is also Mackie Outdoors. I'll see you on the next video.